Now we will calculate the inductance of a coaxial cable. The coaxial cable consists of an inner solid cylinder with radius A, that is this cylinder, and outer cylinder, outer shell, with radius B. There is a top contact which basically connects the inner cylinder to the outer cylinder and bottom contact. And the current flows up in, in the uh, inner cylinder and it comes down uh, from top, it flows from top to bottom uh, in the outer shell. So we want to know the inductance of this coaxial cable. Now we can write Faraday's law, the induced EMF, epsilon induced, is equal to minus L inductance uh, minus L di dt, which is equal to minus d phi b dt, the rate of change of magnetic flux. So we can see that the inductance is uh, the magnetic flux divided by the current phi b over i. So we're going to use this to calculate the inductance of this coaxial cable. So if you consider the Amperian loop 1, L1, which is enclosing the inner cylinder, so it has a radial distance R greater than A, but less than B. So it will be in between the outer shell and the inner cylinder. So that is this scenario here. If I write Ampere's law, the closed path integral b dot ds is equal to mu zero times the current enclosed. The current enclosed by this loop is basically this current i, so it's mu zero times i. Therefore, the magnetic field is mu zero i divided by 2 pi r, where r is between a and b. If I consider the second Amperian loop, L2, uh, which is basically outside, uh, so, th so that's for R greater than B. If I write Ampere's law, closed path integral B dot ds is now mu zero times the current that is flowing up and the current that's flowing down, two currents are enclosed. So I have uh, mu zero i minus i, which is zero. So b times two pi r is basically zero for this uh, closed path integral. So this is also b times two pi r equals mu zero i. So this tells me that the magnetic field outside is going to be zero. If I write the magnetic flux phi b, it's integral uh, the dot product of magnetic field with the area vector b dot dA. So uh, since the magnetic field is a function of uh, radial distance r, dA is basically this area. Uh, it's uh, length L of the cylinder multiplied by dR. So you can see that the magnetic field vector is basically perpendicular to this. So it's basically a parallel to the area vector, which is the normal vector. So this is basically equal to integral B L dr because the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field is zero. So this gives us an integral from A to B for the region between the inner and outer uh, cylinders, mu zero i over 2 pi r, the magnetic field, L dr, which is mu zero i L divided by 2 pi, natural logarithm, B over A. So, the inductance of the coaxial cable will be then the magnetic flux divided by the current phi b over i, which is mu zero l divided by two pi natural logarithm b over a. 
<clears throat> so this basically concludes our calculation uh, and we have achieved, uh, we have obtained the inductance of the coaxial cable. Now, once again, uh, using Faraday's law, minus L di dt equals minus d phi b dt, we see that inductance is phi b divided by i. So our task is to calculate the magnetic flux phi b and divide it by the current to obtain the inductance. Uh, for this task, we consider two Amperian loops, L1 and L2. One has a radius uh, between A and B, one has a radius greater than B, so that's going to give us the magnetic field outside, and this will give us the magnetic field inside. So uh, the current enclosed by this Amperian loop is just I, so mu zero I is B times 2 pi R, and uh, that gives us magnetic field mu zero I over 2 pi R. For L2, since the current enclosed is 0, B times 2 pi R is 0, magnetic field is 0. The flux due to this magnetic field is integral b dot dA uh, and for dA we see we have the length of the uh, coaxial cable L multiplied by dR that's this area where the magnetic field is approximately constant because it's a function of R so mu zero I over 2 pi R is the magnetic field for the region where we have area L dR if we integrate this from A to B we obtain mu zero i l over 2 pi natural log b over a. Dividing it by the current, we obtain inductance.